instructor Jess here from Vegan Astronomy and we're back in the kitchen making an all time favourite, macarons. So you may have seen a master video on macarons on our page before, but I had a lot of contacts from you guys out there wanting a simpler solution. So we have actually come up with a method of being able to make macarons so much easier in the kitchen, so it's accessible to anyone, it doesn't require a super high level of skill, it's something which is attainable for everybody. Um, the product is called Gervais. So why the funky name? Why Gervais? Well, this was actually the name of a man who created one of the first macarons as we know today. So we're talking about the modern macarons. Originally, if you look up the history for macarons, it originated in Italy. Starting out, it may, it's also known as a macaroon. So these were biscuits which were made with egg whites and different types of nuts made by the nuns in the monasteries. And then came along the French, and as they do, they like to improve things, like to refine them, and Gervais was one of the guys who came out with this recipe, which was very, very popular, and very fine and fancy pastry. So that's where the name come from, comes from, Gervais. Just mix with water, and then we can use this as our egg replacer. Now, it's a little different than just potato protein. We have some other special ingredients here which is gonna make our macarons more stable. We're also gonna be able to work with this product in higher humidity environments as well, which is really important, especially for us here in Mallorca. We have super high humidity. So I'm really excited to introduce this new product to you guys and see you in the kitchen making this recipe. And for the thousands of you out there who have seen the previous video on how to make macarons and have tried it, you're going to love this recipe. It's so much easier. It's so simple. You're going to love it. Okay, so let's start off with what we're going to need for this recipe. Starting off with the ingredients. So of course we need our gerbe mix to make our egg replacer. In addition to that, we also need some almond meal. Okay, so we've got just some plain almond meal here. We're also going to be needing some sugar, so you can, the recipe calls for pure icing sugar. I like to just grind my own in a blender, but you can use pure icing sugar, that sugar without cornstarch. And then we just need some plain sugar. I also have some vanilla essence here. And we actually make our own vanilla, vanilla essence here at the Academy because we do use a lot of vanilla pods and we don't like to waste food, so we make that here. I'm also using some color, so this is a gel color. Food grade gel color, vegan of course. You don't have to use this, you can just have them plain. We have a little bit of water. Over here, these are just some ingredients which I'm using to decorate, so not so important. And then you're gonna need a filling. So we have some beautiful ganache left over from our pastry class. So if you wanna learn how to make that, come down here to Mallorca and we'll teach you how to make that in the pastry class. But any kind of filling that you like, you can use jam, you can use buttercream. So let's go over our equipment. All right, so starting with, we need a stand-up mixer. I really love using the KitchenAid, this is my favorite. And you'll also need a ball whisk attachment for whipping up our vegan egg, okay? I'm also using a food processor. So we're gonna use this to grind our almonds and our icing sugar. If you don't have a food processor, you can just use some elbow grease and get all of that mixture through a sieve on your own. Okay, need a bowl with a sieve. I also have here, I really love these scrapers. It makes it so much easier to press all of our mixture through the sieve. So we have a very, very fine crumb. So we get nice fine tops, really nice and smooth. We also have some disposable piping bags here with some piping tips. We're gonna be doing two different sizes today. You will also need a candy thermometer. We are making an Italian style meringue for our macarons today. So we are cooking a syrup and we do require a thermometer. I also have two baking trays, some baking paper. Um, I'm also using a permanent marker and I've got a couple of these paste um, pastry tips here and I like to use these to mark around on my paper so we can have a guide for when we're piping it makes it so much easier and that's it all right so let's prepare our gerbe mixture 
You'll have to do this the day before or at least two hours before you are gonna meet your macro. So you just wanna take one of the packs. We're gonna open this up. I love using these Nutribullet uh, mixers because it just makes it super easy to mix it together. So I have some water in here. Our mixture just goes straight in. And I'm gonna blend that up. Okay, so now that's mixed up, I'm gonna put this in the refrigerator for a minimum of two hours and then we'll be ready to go. So what are some of the special ingredients in the Gerbe mix, you might ask? Well, it is based on potato protein, but in addition to that, we also use a special plant fiber, which has been specially developed for us with a from a company from Germany, completely plant-based, and that's gonna give us some of these really special functions in our mixture that's gonna make it act exactly like egg white. So to start off with, we need to grind down our sugar into pure icing sugar and our almond meals. So these two are gonna go into our food processor. To start off with, we've got my sugar. We're gonna grind this until it's nice and fine. Okay, so now it's a nice fine powder. We're gonna add this to our food processor along with the almond meal. We want to grind this until it's nice and fine. The smoother that we can get and the finer that we can get these two ingredients, we're going to get a nice smooth top to our macaron and also when we bite into it, we're not going to get little pieces of almond meal stuck in our teeth. Okay, so now our almond meal and the pure icing sugar has been blended up together. We need to sift this one to two times. So the, the finer it is, the smoother our tops are going to be. So this is a bit of a lengthy process. So we're going to start off with a little bit at a time. Shake out what you can and then get your pastry spatula and we're going to scrape the rest through. I forgot to mention, you probably noticed that I've got black nail polish today. Usually a big no-no in the kitchen, but we're off at the moment. We don't have school and I'm about to go to Greece. So we're making an allowance today where I'm wearing my nail polish. An interesting fact, which I learned on my discovery of making macarons, is in Japan and Korea, sometimes they're made with peanut flour. I really want to try one of those. The Jobe macaron is actually the Parisian macaron. Very popular in Japan, in China, and also in North America, starting in 2010. In my country, Australia, macarons are even served in McDonald's, or as we call it, Maccas. Maybe you want, one of you pastry chefs out there can convince McDonald's to make these vegan versions. Okay, so now we're gonna create a guide for piping our macarons. I have two pastry tips here, which I'm gonna be using as a guide, because I'm gonna make some small little macarons and also some, some traditional size. Okay, so I have my two baking trays with the two sheets of baking paper or parchment paper, which I've cut to size. I've got two pastry tips here, which I'm using as a guide. So we're gonna be using these and drawing around them with a permanent marker. So the small, for some small little macarons, some little minis, and we're also doing the traditional size, which just so happens to be the size of a traditional pastry tip. So we just wanna take our permanent marker and we wanna make sure that we leave some spacing between each one. So we want about an inch between each one and I'm just gonna draw around. So as you can see, I've got a bit of spacing between. Because they will get a little bit bigger when we tap those air bubbles out. Okay, now that we have our almond meal and our pure icing sugar sifted. We're gonna be adding our first measurement of our gerbe mix. 
and we're going to combine the two of these together until it forms a paste. Now that it's a paste, we're going to put a towel over it and set it aside. So next we need to make our Italian meringue, which is based on a cooked sugar syrup. So to do that, to begin with, we want to get our second measurement of our Jobe egg mix, pop it in our stand-up mix bowl. With the ball whisk attachment, and I'm going to whip this up until it's nice firm piece. So while our vegan egg is whipping, we're going to make our sugar syrup for our Italian meringue. So I have some water here, we also have some plain white sugar, and we're going to put in a nice happy colour. I'm making some orange, almond and chocolate macarons today, so I'm going to do an orange colour. And this is just a gel colour, so I'm going to pop that in as well. And we're going to get this onto the stove and heat it up to... 120 degrees. So we want to stick it over about a medium, medium to high heat and we can mix it until that sugar dissolves but once it dissolves we don't want to touch it because we don't want it to crystallize. into our paste. And then this is going to be vigorously stirred until it's nice and smooth. Folding in the rest of our meringue, step by step. So just turning the bowl as we go. I'm going to fold that meringue in. So I've mixed all my meringue in. If your mixture is a bit thick, you'll need to deflate it a little bit by lifting up and smacking down. You want to be looking for being able to create a figure eight. As soon as you can create a figure eight, when you're dropping down the mixture, you're ready to put it in your piping bag. Okay, so those sheets of paper that we drew our guide on, we want to flip them over so the pen is on the opposite side and just take some of your mixture and we want to put that on the tray. This is going to help it to stick. And we'll stick that down and do the same with the other. So when piping 
our macarons. We want to start in the center, always adding pressure. Just twist on the bottom of your piping bag into the center. And then we're almost to the end. We stop, lift, and twist. Stop, lift, and twist. And just continue along. So now once they're all piped, we want to just give them a bit of a tap to get any air bubbles out. You'll notice that some of them have come to the surface. So we have a toothpick here and I'm just going to pop those out. So I'm going to put a little bit of toppings on top. So here I have some cacao nibs, which I've ground up nice and fine. I have some toasted almond meal and also some orange zest, which has been grated and dehydrated. So we need to have pears. So I'm going to do two of each and then continue on. We just want a little bit on each one. Now we're going to continue with the little baby ones, the, the small one. So same again. And these ones are great for decorating small cakes. With one pack, you should be able to bake. 50 pairs of the large size and up to 100 pairs of the small size. Now that our macarons are all piped out, I'm going to preheat my oven to 130 degrees while these dry, which will take 30 minutes. Okay, so our half an hour is up. The macarons have developed a skin on top. We're gonna pop these in our preheated oven, which is on 135 degrees on a fan bake. And I'm just putting a tray in on the side just to help vent bake. Our macarons as well, so that's steam can escape. So now we can continue cooking until we start seeing feet. If they start to become too big, we want to open the oven to allow some cool air in. So we're going to see how these guys go. Almost there. I usually like to cook them for about 10 minutes at 135 degrees until we get some really nice feet. And then we're gonna open the door up and then turn our temperature down to 100 degrees. So I've just opened it up and you'll notice that our macarons will fall a little bit. And we're just reducing the temperature down to 100 degrees. We're still venting it with our tray on the side of the oven. And we're gonna be cooking this for about 20 minutes until they're poor, until they're dry enough. So you'll know when they're done is when you can take them off and they're dried on the bottom. So I'm going to take these out now and we're going to let, let them cool on the veg. If they're still really sticking, you want to cook them for a little bit longer. See how they have good feet? So after they've cooled, we want to fill it with our ganache. So I'm using a chocolate, orange, and almond ganache that we do in our pastry course today to fill them. So let's give them a pipe. So you want to find a matching pair, just starting in the center. And then we just join them together. Now these need to go into a refrigerator overnight 
in a container and this is going to what we call maturing our macarons. So this is where all the flavor is going to come out, all that beautiful ganache is going to go throughout it and they're going to become a little bit more softer as well and perfect to serve at any tea party. You know what? I can't wait so I'm going to try one now and see what they like. Bon appétit! Mm. <laughs> I couldn't help myself that I have my black nail polish on at the moment. So we've got all our little mini macarons here using the Jobe mix. So this is also available on the website in a sample size where you can make exactly what I've done today, a whole batch of these beautiful macarons. So I can't wait to see you in the kitchen and see what type of flavors that you come up with yourself. See you next time.